Welcome to Room 101. Our guests come here to place their fears and their pet hates into the Room 101 vault in the hope that they'll be locked away there forever. But they have to convince me first. Joining me tonight is a television presenter, singer, writer and comedian. She's an extraordinary woman and I'm sure you'll love her. I love her. Please welcome the Queen of Rock Wiz, Julia Zamiro. <laughs> Ah, Julius, oh, how are you? Paul McDermott, I'm really good. Mm -hmm. Very good. Ready to, to cast away some fears. Do you feel that a burden will be lifted from your shoulders okay. when you express these things? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, well, you, you seem to have a lot yes. of anxieties and worries and troubles and traumas. And... <laughs> <laughs> so, shall we get stuck in? Oh, I'd love to. This is like a therapy session. This is so great. It's going to be And it's be free. Wonderful. I love it. Okay. What's this one about? Julian? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, right, yes. <laughs> That's good. It's how good, long, huh? How long, how long is that poor person going to be in there for? Oh, he's going to be in, well, as long as we talk. <laughs> <laughs> this guy went to NIDA for four years. No way. Yeah. <laughs> this represents the high five. And I think the high five should be banished for eternity, eternity, eternity. Isn't the high five, though, a healthy alternative to a handshake? No, apparently fist pump, yeah, bump, pump, or whatever, yeah. and high fives are, are, are more hygienic than the handshake. Well, really? But you don't look like an idiot. I don't know if you just hand. noticed, but we just high five then, which you have you, a real issue with. I didn't even... You talk... Bang, that's gone, that's out. Who cares? That's not going in. Hope one's over. Let's walk away from it. Do you have an issue with other forms of hand-based communication? Uh, what do you feel about um, thumbs up? Yeah, what I about, like thumbs up. No, what I about love jazz hands? Jazz hands? Love jazz Theater. hands. Love, love jazz it. hands. Well, it's contextual. Thumbs up means something totally different if you go for a massage. <laughs> From my experience. <laughs> and jazz hands, right? Looks lovely there, but on Manus Island, that means don't shoot me. Yeah, it does. <laughs> sure. Okay, what about uh, high-fiving politicians? How are you with uh, high-fiving politicians? Hi oh. People of the people? Not people of the people, Can people we have a look? of the idiots. Yeah, let's... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Julia, there's <laughs> Julia okay. Gillard. Certainly seems to be saying a very happy hello, doesn't it? Hi. 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 Okay, what about this? This is the boss at the moment. Mm. He's going for the low high-five. Oh, not a lot of happiness in the room now. <laughs> It's made everyone a bit depressed. It is, this whole thing of banging up against. It's like, going, bang, aren't we amazing? It's very... It's, it's American. You say it's you American don't like the American again. aspect of it. I don't like any, it. anything American. Most of my things are American here this oh, evening. Okay. We, we have a little bit of America coming up. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> is that all right? Yes. Okay, this is Scott McIntyre on an episode of the dramatic reality juggernaut, American Idol. Can you just watch this? Tell us what you think of this. We'll see. We'll see where it goes. I am pumped. <laughs> As you should be. Well, I'm giving you a high five. Congratulations. There it is. And we will see you in Hollywood, California. Brian Seacrest, you are no host. You wouldn't see you or I doing that. Well, no, I've done it many would... times. No, you have not. Now, that fella, clearly, I think he misled Ryan when he said, we'll see how it goes, didn't he? But what's incredible is that some people self for high fives. Sorry, self high five. Self high five. So you go, mmm, mmm. <laughs> and that's infinite in America. Or, Paul, you and I You're now. You're making shit no, up. No. <laughs> no, no, the whole, no. we're the high fives, we're the high fives. How's this, how's this? What's no. this? You and I could now high five from a great distance, so, but we don't touch. So let's high five. So, yeah. Oh. Do you know what that's called? What? A Wi Fi. <laughs> a, 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 why is it called a Wi Fi? Because it's like Wi Fi. A Wi Fi? Yeah. I'm it's a bit gone. Slow. Bloody hell, look at us with our... Is that a thing? That is a thing. No, that's not a thing. And what, it's another American thing. No, you're crazy look with... Look You've up, got some buddy. disease of the mind. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying it's going to get to the mental, mental state. Really? No. That, oh, look, I learned something tonight <laughs> and I wasn't just, expecting to. It's, and again... Oh. Get your hand up. <laughs> four years of training. Four years of goddamn training. <laughs> Did you see it wilting like a bloody tulip before? Just, oh. 
think it's like so it doesn't well. even realise it's on camera. <laughs> <laughs> what about this one? We've been practising this one. Uh, variants on the high five for Australia. We do the whack, yeah? We do the that. We come out, we go back in, oh we do God. the double fist, bang, bang. No! Yes. Incredible. Your mother's finally going to be proud of you. <laughs> Okay. Well, I've got to be honest with you, I'm a bit partial to high five, but on this particular instance, I feel we can actually send the high five, the American high five, into room 101. Thank you. The, the over adulation of it, the exuberance of it. I want to see it gone. Can we Wi five it Let's to room 101? Yes. Whoa. Goodbye. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> you almost got me there. I got uh, quite excited. Well, you got me before. I, I know that was cool. I just... Uh, I leave people hanging. Yeah, yeah. Let's have a look at your next item, which is represented by this look at lovely her. thing. Is that me? What is all this? I think that is you. I think they've specially well, think made that. I've not seen a recent photo. Obviously, my hair's quite blonde now. But that is adorable, the little red shoes. I know exactly what that dress is. Yes. Now. Oh, oh for God's oh, sake! Man. Yeah. Does this make sense to you? Oh, it's bad audience behaviour. Bad audience behaviour. Bad audience behaviour. Bad audience. <laughs> and I mean in a live context, in a live environment at the theatre, stand-up comedy, music, when people are, I don't know, they've got their car, they've come all that way, they've paid the money to watch a bunch of people who have spent a long time putting on a show, writing it, rehearsing it, to then talk, cough, ring... Yeah, yeah. That kind of thing. I went to a show once where, um, you know, great comedy show happening, two fantastic guys on stage, and one woman was playing with a phone. Of course, they stopped it. You know, they could. It's comedy. What are you doing? You know, are you texting? She said, no, I'm on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, really? No. Th that was the response. We're like, you're kidding. She said, yeah, I've got an item I'm bidding on. And <laughs> the guys went, well, I hope you don't get that item, whatever happens. Five minutes later, she's back on there, hiding behind her boyfriend, still eBaying. Well, at the end, Paul, I went up and had a word. She Ooh. didn't like it. <laughs> but it's more in the theatre where you'll be on stage. Now, I've done a few plays. And in the middle of the quietest moment, someone in the front row will open up a packet of chips. <laughs> now, they open a packet of chips and it's just going... <laughs> but just... It could be related to his enjoyment of the show. I find that with people, sometimes they start eating faster if they're having a good time. <laughs> I won't say where that happens, but... <laughs> but you don't have a problem with the food itself. No, not the Loud, loud itself. food. No, no, but just... Because I find if food is, is too loud or if it's mooing or... <laughs> then, it, then, you know, it's, it may be too fresh. <laughs> Times have improved, though. I mean, you just go to theatre or, or cinema, mm. and people would be on the coffin sticks. In the theatre? Chock top on a cigarette. The cinema, well, yeah, yeah. The peep shows I went yeah, to. Yeah, sure. Oh. <laughs> you know what I dislike personally? People that laugh louder than I think they should laugh at a joke or a gag. That can ruin a film for me or a theatrical experience. The person that is there going, <laughs> you know, you think that's that. <laughs> That woman. The gag's not worth it. Why are you laughing so much? I'm in two minds about bad audience behaviour, but I, I think just because it feels good to do it, and I don't like people that eat crisps, and I don't like people that try and get that last bit of coke out of the jumbo. You know, if four litres of goddamn lolly water hasn't slaked your thirst, the last drop that isn't going to help you, is it? I'm going to send it off. You happy? I'm going to send it off. Goodbye. Bang. Bye. Back shortly. <laughs> uh, welcome back to room 101, where we're banishing fears at the moment, the fears of Julia Zamira. Mm. Okay, here we go. <sighs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is there something in it? I think so. Oh, my God, that is exactly what I'm talking about. All right, this is the all-you-can-eat buffet. <laughs> I'm so morally 
a poster on so many levels. To me, it's just the most overblown, hideous excuse for eating. Okay. The buffet is really just a meal out for a person who can't be asked reading a menu. Yes. Do you feel that? Yes. You've <laughs> laziness is a big part of it. It's all about laziness. It is all about laziness. But it's like taking a contiki tour of the world, right, and going, I'll have some of it all. So when you go to a food court, you just go, oh, well, I'll just go to China today. Or I'll just go to the Middle East and get a falafel. Easy. But here it's saying, I'm going to pile that plate with a lasagna and a shawarma and fried rice and oysters and prawns. And that is disgusting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I can't. Uh... Disgusting. When I was a child, I loved a buffet. When I was a teen, I loved the all-you-can-eat aspect. I didn't like it as much in my 20s, 30s, 40s and beyond. But I feel when I'm about 70 on a cruise ship, I'm going to be back in there bang on a buffet. Do you? Yeah. Do you feel that? No! No! Get in! Get out of the way! Where are you? Get in! Daddy's coming through for the fish fingers! But people do love the buffet. People do love it. Uh, this could be the, the buffet of the future. Can we have a look? <laughs> Aww. What about that one? <laughs> That's an American concept. I'm still, I'm still coming to terms with how that would actually work. Especially when you want to go back for your second plate. Do you have to... <laughs> is there a block you drive around? You're reversing, you're reversing. No, yeah. well, who do people think? They think it's Tudor time, 16th century. Do they think they're Henry VIII? That was the only time you used to have big banquets. To impress people, to impress the court and the lords, right? With real, with wild boar, oh. or spatchcock. Oh, I love not it. A salad oh, with talking. corn in it, you know, or... I think it's time we all went to a buffet right now. What are you... A dirty dick. Getting, getting a bit hungry. Do you know what I mean? And it's not like the fancy, beautiful, say, Swedish buffet, the smorgasbord, right? Smorgasbord. Does the smorgasbord differ from a buffet? Uh, of course it does, because oh. it's just one country, right? Oh. It's just Sweden, <laughs> yeah. right? So at least you can go, I start with the fish, I'll move on to the meat, and then you can be posh about your food, and there's not too much of it. It's just enough, because they're not... Fat pigs. <laughs> With just a, a shouted response of positivity, <laughs> how many people are for the buffet? Yeah. Ooh. Well, how many people are against the buffet? Yeah. Okay, that's it, I think. We're going to send it to room 101. Are you happy? I'm thrilled. Farewell, well buffet. Done, oh. 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 Done. Well done. Bang. Still good? I feel great. Still good. I love you. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. I've forgotten what it is. Oh, maybe this will remind you. Thinking inside the box. Live life like you're on television by Julia Zamiro. I've never written that. ABBA, unashamed. <laughs> How to turn your love of ABBA into an asset. <laughs> What does this refer to? Um, I'm referring to life coaches. Life coaches? Yeah. You have an issue with life coaches? Yeah, I do. What, what is that issue, Julia? Well, what? Paul... Um... <laughs> well, it's getting feisty. I like My it. issue is that I do believe at the end of the day they are snake oil peddlers <laughs> filling people with hope that they may not be able to come through with for lots of money. Right. And I think that's wrong, wrongity wrong. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't people who can give good advice, but this whole life coach as guru uh, is dangerous. You must admit they do help some people. Losers, failures. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think they prey on people who are, who are weak, and you might say that's what religion does. But when you go to a life coach or in those guru situations and you say, I've got a question, they say, let's just park that. All this jargon to make people go, oh, I don't really know where I am anymore, but I've paid $3,000 and I'm going to walk on hot coals in a minute. Are you saying you have done this or are you just using this as an example to illustrate I other people? I have done it. Oh! Oh, oh but Paul, oh. unless one has done it, can one be truly knowledgeable? Oh, I suppose you've got a good point there. <laughs> <laughs> so I think nothing can be sold. It'd be cheaper to go to a good counsellor and have a chat or maybe a good friend and do it for free. You know, we should look after each other and not go, oh, I'm going to, life coach is going to set me a goal, another goal. It's like, oh, you and your goals. Life coaching is the second biggest growth industry in the world, second only to information technology. It's worth about $10 billion a year. Ka-ching. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you're, you're one of your big gripes is with one of the greatest yeah. ever life coaches. Should we talk momentarily about this wonderful man? Let's. Should we have a look at him? Check this out. Stay in the state of certainty. Some of you lost it. Intensify it. Whatever it takes. Intensify. Make your move. Come on. Make your move. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Now feel that in your body. Don't let go of it. Anthony Robbins, he bamboozles and he, he blinds people and he, he, he throws things at them and confuses them. Confusions. Yeah. We all know that. It's part of bright lights, confusion, get them tired. They're there from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. It's, it's cultish. Now, I... I prepared earlier. You've got a small Anthony Robbins in your pocket. No, just some, some of the mantras. Because let's, I, let's hear them. I can't remember them because why would I? I don't believe in this rubbish. How's this, Paul? If you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always gotten. <laughs> if you can't, you must. If you must, you can. <laughs> no I've idea. I've got that tattooed on my ass. <laughs> <Have you> really? <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> What was it about? That was a young man. You didn't know what you were doing. I was a young man. It's hard to do it in the mirror as well. <laughs> <laughs> Does it interest you to know that Anthony Robbins has a life coach? God help me know. His life coach says, no. stop being a dick. <laughs> Are we, uh... <clears throat> well, you know, life coaches have also um, taken on uh, animal forms. Yes. May we see the next bit of footage we have? <gasps> Okay, now, uh, that gentleman uh, is at that point in time <laughs> being spiritually entered yep. by a dolphin. <laughs> now he's going to let that dolphin control his body and speak through his mouth. Are you ready for this? <laughs> this, this will change your mind about life coaching. <laughs> We are Kachuba. Welcome, dear friends. It is our great delight and pleasure to share this vibration, this time, this space within your world. We are dolphin form. You are human form. And there is no difference between us. My dear friends, we are one in spirit. So clearly a Ukrainian dolphin, yeah. but <laughs> that doesn't convince you? That doesn't sway you at all into the wonderful world of animal telepathy? You know, a dolphin coming. <laughs> He's not even doing a dolphin. You probably. are an even better dolphin than How's that gentleman. Go? No, that's great. That's perfect. Yeah, no, I'm going to do it. I'm going to send it into well, room please, 101. Would you? May I do it? Please. With your, do own, it. With your own books? My own books. Bye bye, Abba. Goodbye. I'm shamed, although. Mm. Go on. Go on. Go on. Packaging, 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 packaging. Why is packaging a pet hate? Here it is. What issue do you have? Packaging now has become so impenetrable, and I'm talking specifically about heat-sealed clam packs and blister packs. Oh, for those that don't know, this is a clamshell packaging. Or a blister pack. And you find yourself going, when did this happen, that I can't open things anymore? I'm not old. Some people use knives to get into a blister pack that has a knife. And the irony of that. Yeah, okay, so, th so this is upsetting for you. Um, you find this humorous because, of course, if in a case of emergency, how could you get to the you claw could, hammer? You couldn't. You couldn't. You couldn't. It'd be impossible. Impossible. You'd need your little uh, chicken scissors. Yep. Or you get your tweezers and your ding trying Ooh. to open something. Okay. Oh, tamper proof. People bleed. People sprain their wrists from opening jars that cannot be opened. Yeah. And you know what happens after that? Rap rage. Rap, rage, yes, rap. Yes, it's not road rage, it's rap rage from the rap. Yeah, the yeah. rapping makes people Dang angry. It. Okay, uh, let's continue this theme then oh, bull. with a couple of <laughs> no, other items. No. We'll go with this one first. Oh, look at that. Okay, there's a fire in the house. <laughs> there's a fire in the house. Oh, no. Do I have to That's open it? Work. Hey, try and open it. Can you open it? Would that be possible? Okay, the fire, the fire's raging out of control. Quickly, I didn't Julia, know. Julia Zemiro, quickly. Get, no, I don't get. know what I do. There's a fire. You people, like, I know. Little Jenny, Jen, Jenny's, little Jenny's bursting. Quick. Oh. oh, the cat's on fire now too. No, it's, oh, look oh, at that, you're maybe. trying hard. I mean, oh, here we go, here we go. You, now already. Oh, wait, oh, you've done it. Yes, but. Julia Zemiro. I know, but then, but then you 
got to get it out of the. You've actually got to get it out of the actual oh. thing. And you can't. You are determined. See, I can't actually get it out of the oh. thing. <laughs> and then you get ready, Bray. Get it. Get it. That was good. Oh, oh, I, I one. really got worked up by that. I didn't think I'd get so worked up, Doctor. Oh, thank you very much. It's getting there. He's like a doctor, isn't he? Professor Paul, Professor McDermott. This is the first I've seen packaging rage. I've, I've experienced it slightly in myself, but to see it in someone else is really quite, um, well, it's quite freeing, I think. <laughs> I, yeah. What about the cellophane, the little light cellophane, clear cellophane around chewing gum? You can't find the end. You'll be looking oh, for Oh, I don't the like end. that. Who is it? Like You're it. holding it up to the light, going, no. where's the end? Where's the end? I can't even get the plastic off a DVD. There's no way in. So you get the knife, and you go, well, that's not a good idea, because you'll get angry in a minute. So you get something smaller, and you've got to get in that little slit at the top, and you still can't peel it off. It's just a DVD. Yeah, you don't want to kill yourself for Forrest Gump, do you? <laughs> it's frightening. It's a frightening trend. It's a frightening trend. Are there any products that have, you know, that are difficult to open that you would never give up on? There's only one, Paul. Hmm. That is the champagne bottle. <laughs> because, thanks, Mum. Um, <laughs> I was celebrating something recently and uh, we were having a bit of trouble and we had to kind of, but it's worth it because when you hear that yeah. sound, yeah. You're you, very know, good it, at that. That's you good. know it's a party. Yeah. I enjoy opening things that have a natural. <laughs> it's all gone. It's all gone a bit weird it's all, all of a sudden, hasn't it? It's all gone a bit it? SBS, hasn't it? <laughs> all gone a bit, it's all gone a bit sex Ooh. before soccer. Now look, Sorry about what that. I like, what I like is things that have a natural, like a banana. Oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> banana example yeah, or an orange an orange, orange is the perfect thing orange. that you go oh let's how are we going to cut this well you just peel the skin off it's a magic thing you can carry around anywhere you like and then you open it and it's a brilliant thing and you just wash your hands afterwards yeah <laughs> well I'm, I'm all for that it might not be the solution but there may be a way forward I don't think I'm going to send packaging into room 101 tonight. I know that's going to depress you. I know it leaves us on a bit of a low. But what I'd like to do is offer you this. It's an all-purpose package. <laughs> it's a new invention. It's right off the plane. The only weird thing about it is we've had it for a week. No one's been able to open it. 